One type of problem that we run into pretty often in chemistry is a limiting reactant type of problem. This is just a specific type of stoichiometry problem and it can be approached in a few different ways. This video looks at the reactant reactant method for solving a limiting reactant problem. First of all, remember every stoichiometry problem has four steps. They're always the same steps and they always work. First, write a correctly balanced chemical equation. Once you have that balanced chemical equation, look at the problem and dig out information so that you can find moles of something. That's the known moles. Once you're in moles, you can use the mole to mole relationships in the balanced chemical equation to convert moles of what you know to moles of what you're looking for. And finally, those moles of what you're looking for can be converted into whatever the problem is asking for, whether that's grams, concentration, heat, or any number of other things. Every limiting reactant problem is a stoichiometry problem. Treat it the same way and you'll have a much better time of it. Limiting reactants occur whenever there is an excess of one reactant and not quite enough of another reactant. Whichever one we run out of is called the limiting reactant, and that's either called a limiting reactant or a limiting reagent. Those two terms are pretty much interchangeable. Fortunately, they're both abbreviated LR. I'll try to stick with calling it a limiting reactant throughout these videos, but I may jump back and forth in my terminology. Let's look at a problem. 17.39 grams of sodium metal reacts with 31.84 grams of chlorine gas to form sodium chloride solid. Identify the limiting reactant and determine the mass of excess reagent that remains when the limiting reactant is consumed. This is a reasonably common type of problem that we might run into. And let's look at a couple things here just to make sure that we're keeping track of what's going on. First of all, don't fall for the trap. Many, many students will see a problem like this and will want to compare 17 grams to 31 grams directly. Don't do it. You need to do more than just compare the grams of the reactants. That's not going to work for us. If we think about this specific problem, what's it asking us for? Well, it's giving us information about reactants and it's asking what the limiting reactant is and it wants to know how much excess reagent or reactant is left over at the end of the problem. So everything that it's telling us, everything that it's asking us in this problem is related to reactants. That makes us a really good candidate for a reactant reactant approach to this problem. Step one, let's get that balanced equation written. We've got sodium solid and chlorine gas reacting to form sodium chloride solid. Remember, chlorine is one of those diatomic molecules as an element, so this is Cl2. Because of that, we're not quite balanced yet. We need a couple of twos to get our balanced chemical equation. Now that we've got a balanced chemical equation, step two, find moles of the known. And for this type of a problem, for a reactant reactant problem, we could pick either one of these. I'm going to go ahead and pick them both and just run through uh, both calculations in parallel so that you can see what they both look like. So first get moles of sodium and get moles of chlorine from the information in the problem. Step three, use reaction ratios to find the moles of interest. So we've got this relationship of two to one to two in the balanced chemical equation. Let's use those to find the moles of interest, the moles we're looking for. Since we're doing a reactant reactant approach in this problem, let's take our sodium. We got moles of sodium and the moles of interest is moles of chlorine. How much chlorine is required to react with this much sodium? That's our one to two ratio. One mole of chlorine gas reacts with two moles of sodium solid. The parallel calculation, we've got chlorine. Now it's a two to one ratio. Two moles of sodium react with one mole of chlorine gas to give us how many moles of sodium are required to react with the given amount of chlorine. 
Step four, now that we've got our moles of interest, we can convert them into what we want. And since we're working a lot with grams here, let's just work everything in grams. So again, sodium to moles of sodium to moles of chlorine to grams of chlorine. So 17.39 grams of sodium will react with 26.82 grams of chlorine gas. Again, doing both of these in parallel, 31.84 grams of chlorine will react with 20.65 grams of sodium. So there we've got our reactant reactant method uh, worked through. We've gone from one reactant and determined how much of the other reactant, and we did it both ways. But we haven't actually answered the problem, right? We haven't actually answered the question that was being asked because we've got two answers here. What do we do with those two answers? How do we actually answer the question that's being asked? On the limiting reactant side of things, this is telling us that 17.39 grams of sodium will react completely with 26.82 grams of chlorine gas. Looking up at the problem, I've got 31, I've got almost 32 grams of chlorine gas. I only need 26.82 to react with all the sodium, so I've got extra chlorine gas. That means that the sodium must be the limiting reagent and the chlorine must be the excess reagent. Looking at it in parallel, if I look at it from the chlorine side, 31.84 grams of chlorine gas requires 20.65 grams of sodium to react completely. In the problem, I only have 17.39 grams of sodium available. So I'm gonna run out of sodium before I get to 20.65. So the chlorine must be excess and the sodium is what's limiting us. Two parallel calculations that give us, fortunately, the same result. But we still haven't quite answered the question that's being asked completely. So looking back here, with sodium as our limiting reagent and chlorine as our excess reagent, this is why we did the reactant-reactant method, because I need this number. Figuring out how much excess chlorine I've got, I put 31.84 grams into the reaction, that's from the problem, and when I use up all of the sodium, I will have used up 26.82 grams of chlorine in the reaction. So subtracting those, I get 5.02 grams of chlorine gas remaining. And that answers all the parts. I've identified the limiting reactant and I've determined the mass of excess reagent that remains when the limiting reactant is consumed. When do we use the reactant reactant method? Well, this was a good example. It was a problem where we were really only concerned with the reactants. All the information we had was about reactants. All of the information we were looking for was about the reactants. We still needed to know the products in order to write a correctly balanced chemical equation, but the reactant reactant method was a little bit more useful here because that's what we were really interested in. A couple of places we might use this is if we were looking at waste, how much waste are we going to produce in a chemical reaction. This could be used in that type of a setting. This is also the approach we use whenever we're doing some reaction planning. So if I want to plan out a reaction and let's say I knew I wanted to use five grams of sodium in this reaction, how many grams of chlorine gas would I need? Well, that's just a stoichiometry problem that we're using for reaction planning and it uses a reactant reactant method. There are lots of stoichiometry problems. They all follow the same four steps. So if you can focus on using those four steps in all those different types of problems, it'll be a more consistent approach for you and it'll be a better way to get more practice. Good luck.